Well, good evening to everybody and welcome to the latest in our curriculum um, online virtual open sessions. This one's on agriculture, land-based engineering and land-based studies that we offer here at Eastern College. I'm Corian Piesgood, I'm Chief Exec and Principal at City College Norwich, which includes Eastern College and Paston College. Um, and tonight you're going to be in the capable hands of my colleague um, Paula Ottaway, who's Director for Land-Based Industries. So I'll hand you over to Paula, who will take you through some slides. Um, just to say that we've got the question and answer open this evening. So if you've got any questions, pop them in there. They come straight through to me um, and I'll make sure I ask Paula those questions as we're going through. So Paula, over to you. Thank you very much and hopefully you can all hear me. Um, so welcome to the presentation on uh, the land-based industries here at Eastern College. Uh, hopefully by the end of it you'll have quite a bit of information that you need to start making those decisions about which courses you would like to choose um, in the next year. So the purpose of um, today's session is to give you information about the courses that we offer. Um, so we've got um, a breadth of courses um, across um, six different areas uh, within the land-based industries, um, including agriculture, um, land-based engineering. We have floristry, um, arboriculture, horticulture, um, and land and wildlife. We're going to give you an insight in what it's like to study at Eastern College. Um, it's a lovely college. Um, it's got some beautiful grounds um, and it's a really, really um, good place to study and hopefully answer your questions so that we can um, support you to make the right choice. So why do you want to study um, at this college? Uh, well, we have specialist teachers uh, within all of the areas um, and they all have that vocational experience. Um, so they've come from industry, they understand the industry um, and therefore they are able to ensure that you get that in-depth professional experience. Um, and that's what's really key. We need to send you out with those work skills. We have some really amazing facilities. So we have a working farm. Um, we've got some fantastic spaces for you to develop the skills and knowledge that you're going to need to take you further. For those who don't live locally, we have um, accommodation on site um, to ensure that you can stay on site, uh, get three meals a day, do your studies um, and still access all the um, provision. Um, so if you don't live locally, please don't think that discounts you from coming to the college. And the college environment treats you as a young adult. Um, it is that move from school to college, um, but we do it in a way that you are supported. Um, so if you have any additional needs, um, whether that's something such as dyslexia, um, dyscalculia, we can support, we can ensure that you have support that's either direct support or off course support. Um, we have supports, um, staff within a number of sessions um, but they will challenge you as well um, and give you the skills that you need to succeed. If we think about life as uh, our college as a whole we do have our mission statement which is challenging minds, inspiring success and securing futures. And that is absolutely what we live and breathe here. We do want to challenge you. We do want to inspire you. But it's really important that we secure those futures, that you go out being able to move into sustainable employment with the skills that allow you to go into an ever-changing world, um, because that is essential, that you have those skills that are transferable across different roles throughout your lifetime. Uh, we all do different jobs as we go through life as adults. We may start off in one career and then move across. I know I started out life as a police officer and then ended up in education. And I know that Corian sitting here with me started out um, in plumbing, <laughs> I think is that, um, and is now principal of, of the college. So we, we, we go across different um, pathways, but it's those transferable skills. We have ways of working um, and those are for 
everybody. Those are for staff, those are for students, um, it's for everybody who comes into the college. Um, and it's things like being collaborative, working together. It's about being respectful. It's about being creative um, and aspirational, you know, really striving for the very, very best you possibly can. And we have a diverse student body. Um, and that is, is makes the college. Um, I think that's so, so important, um, having that diversity. So if you come into the college and you come into the land base, you may have um, students alongside you who have grown up in the farming um, environment, um, their families are farmers or they've worked in that environment, but you also just might get students who have come from a non-farming background who really want to learn about the industry. And that makes it so exciting because people will come with different views, um, they'll come with different ideas and that makes really good teams and it makes progression really, really easy. So why this area? Why the agricultural, the land-based area? I think the thing is that one thing that you can expect is that if you come and study these courses, you, you are being opened up to a possibility of a varied career, loads and loads of options. Um, the land-based industries are going through so many changes at the moment um, with conservation, sustainability. Um, there's so much being looked at in this area. Um, there are strong opportunities um, for jobs in Norfolk, but also for further afield. You know, this is where you can spread your wings and look at other um, opportunities. Uh, and I did some research uh, coming onto the presentation to look at sort of starting salaries um, in different roles that you could move into. Um, so if you're looking at agronomy, you could have a 26,000 pounds a year starting salary. Um, Combine and tractor drivers, 25,000. Um, if you're going into ecology, you could be looking at 32,000 as a, as a starting salary. So these are really, really positive um, salaries that, that, you know, will allow you to move, be independent um, and start your lives as adults, as working adults. So lots of opportunities. So what are you going to expect when you come off onto one of our courses? Um, certainly it's about that mix of theory and practical experience um, and that's essential. You cannot do courses such as these without that practical link but you also need to ensure that you're doing um, the theory side of it which is really going to extend your knowledge and understanding. Um, so we have placements um, so a lot of the courses will do placements in real workplaces over extended periods of time. Um, so for many of the courses that we do, especially at sort of level three, you're looking at 150 hours at least within an industry placement. Um, as we've as I've said, you've got industry, industry specialist teaching staff. Um, but that's also supplemented with employer talks, employer, you know, going out to visit different places, um, looking at bringing in all sorts of opportunities to enrich your understanding of the area that you're going in. We quite often get contacted by employers who want to come in and talk, who want to come in and discuss things. Um, I literally was contacted yesterday by an employer who said, we really want to come in and talk to your students about the work that we're doing. So we're getting them on board. Um, there's a variety of pathways um, linked to the employment. So within the agriculture, we do arable and livestock. Um, we do gamekeeping as well as the land and wildlife management. We do conservation. So there's lots of pathways that you can take once you've decided what's the route for you. And also those progression opportunities to higher education and, and apprenticeships. On courses at level one and level two, we also ensure that you're developing your maths and English skills. Um, those are the sorts of things that are essential in this line of work. Um, you cannot work in the land-based industry without understanding your maths. Everything is linked to maths. Um, but you also need your English skills um, when you're writing out documents or completing risk assessments. You, you've got to be able to write them a 
um, properly and making sure that you're using the right language. So maths and English is essential. It's an integral part of the of the um, the area. So progression. What? How can you progress through the courses? So we do courses from level one to level three. Um, and the vast majority of students who progress from level one to level two will move to either apprenticeships or employment. We do have some that move on to level three, so please don't think that you can't. So um, that is a possibility as well. Um, and students from level three courses, again, will move on to employment or to a variety of courses at university. I've listed a few on this slide here and you'll you'll see I've highlighted a couple in yellow. And those are courses that we actually run at the college. So we've got an agribusiness management um, degree and a wildlife and conservation degree. And that really shows that you can start at the college, the college from the very beginning of your post 16 career right until you've completed your degree, graduated from the cathedral in Norwich. That's where we do our graduation ceremonies. It's an amazing day. Um, and then into whatever employment um, you're choosing. But there are obviously other areas where you can go and do your degrees. We are not the only place. Um, and I've put some ideas there of possible degree progression routes. Um, you know, you've got food technology and product development, rural enterprise, land management. Um, lots and lots of different um, qualifications that you can progress on to. Um, and I think that's the key is having those aspirations, because as I said at the beginning, the industry is changing so much and they're definitely looking for those um, graduate entry programmes. So what courses do we run? So as I said, we've got sort of six areas. Agriculture is probably the biggest area that we have. And we've got courses at level one, level two and level three. Um, in the level one and the level two, they're general agricultural courses and you will do both arable and livestock within those um, areas. At the level three, that's a two year. So you do your advanced technical in the first year and then you can move on to the extended diploma in your second year. And in your second year, you would choose a pathway. So that would be with either the um, arable or the livestock. So you can choose which route you want to go to. With the land based engineering, we do level two and level three. Um, and again, thinking about the different and most of the entry criteria are based on your GCSEs. Um, so to get onto our level three programmes, you really need to be getting your maths, your English and your science at grade four and above. Um, that's what we're looking for for those level three. If you don't quite make that with your maths and English, then we will look at placing you either at level one or level two, um, depending on the course. And then we will support you to achieve your maths and English. In land and wildlife, um, we've got the technical certificates um, at level two and then the advanced technical diploma, which again, in your second year, you can then choose pathways. Um, at the moment, we've got the game keeping, um, the conservation. So we've got different different pathways within the land and wildlife. Um, and then moving on, we've got floristry. Um, and I haven't put the, the levels on there, so apologies, but there's the technical certificate in floristry, which is a level two. Uh, and then again, the advanced technical diploma in floristry, which is the level three. Um, and again, those are sorts of areas where you could possibly going into setting up your own business in floristry. Um, so lots of opportunities. Um, and at the moment with the forestry and arboriculture, we just do the level three. Um, so again, lots of opportunities then. Uh, and at the moment, the, the work based horticulture um, moving forward uh, for next year, we're doing level two because we find that actually then moving out and possibly into the apprenticeship route is probably the best way for that horticulture route. So it's really still giving you that depth of um, and breadth of options within the area. You just have to choose which one it is that you you want to do. So what next? So you can start applying now. Definitely, we're interviewing already. We've had our first lot of interviews for most of the courses. Um, and I think the thing to, to sort of think about is to complete your application, um, but really, really try to apply as soon as you can. Um, 
it's always good to have a first choice and a, at least a second choice because we do have the courses fill up um, quickly. Um, once you've filled and submitted your application, you'll be invited to an interview. Um, at the moment, we're doing online interviews where you will talk to one of the uh, course team. Um, they'll go through your application, through your predicted grades, all those sorts of things. Um, and then what will happen is you will be um, offered a place based on that interview. Um, make sure that you ask lots of questions at those interviews. Make sure that you're making the right choice for you. That's really, really important. But also keep your options open. Um, we've put on there, have a plan B. And I think that's always really, really important. Um, just in case you don't quite get the grades that you were anticipating or you're not sure which area it is that you possibly want to go into. So have that plan B. Um, so step three, obviously, um, we'll be in touch with the official letter for the offer and then closer to um, just after your results come through in August, you'll be invited to um, enrol at the college. Um, so it's quite a clear um, step process but the main thing is that you get those applications in that's really really important um, because we do fill up we, we're already getting as I say we've already got quite a number of applications um, and with these courses because they're the vocational element to them um, we have to keep the group sizes relatively small because obviously you can't take 30 odd young people into um somewhere where the the cattle are or the sheep because we have to we have to work in small groups so it's really really important um, to get your, your, your place secure on the courses so over to you um, if you've got any questions for us um, please um, ask or if you later on think gosh I wish I'd asked you can always use um, you can always contact us um, at the um, the website there and we'll get somebody to answer your questions for you thank you very much it's lovely thank you paula and we have got some some questions um i'll take the first ones and then i'll hand some over to you okay um but first of all we've got about how do i apply um you can apply directly on our website if you're on the website there's an apply here button and it leads you through all of the processes that you need to do but some schools and careers teachers would rather that you applied through help you choose and sometimes they support you to do that in school it doesn't matter to us whether you use help you choose or the website they all come through to the same place and where Paula was recommending that you apply as soon as you can. That's because we take applications and, and give offers strictly in the order of you applying. But whether you come from Help You Choose or the website, whatever the date is of you applying, we'll recognise that date in our system. So don't worry about that. And Paula's spoken about lots of the lovely things we've got here. And I know one of the questions is, well, when can I come and have a look round? Um, especially if you're doing interviews, um, as we're having to at the moment online. We really hope that we'll get back to normal um, open events in the spring term. We have an open day planned in February and another one in July. Um, sitting where we are at the moment with the Omicron variant, I would say I would be pretty confident that we will be running the open event in July, um, but watch this space about the one in February, um, because it is important for you to come and look around when you've been in a school setting. Um, I don't think you can quite understand the scale of what we have here. As you went through, you sort of saw a few pictures of tractors and a few livestock, but when you see that, um, actually in the flesh and see how how large the campus is um, and the facilities we've got they are fantastic so do come and have a look about 200 hectares of permanent grassland and arable land we've yeah. got so. yeah yes so it's pretty impressive um paulie you spoke about interviews and making sure that you asked questions but i think we've got just a couple of people worried about yeah but what questions are they going to get asked what might they have to know for the interview I think the thing is about the interview, it's very much making sure that we're getting it right where as to the course that you want to do. So it's not as though it's an interview 
that you're trying to get for a job or anything like that. This is about they'll be asking questions to make sure that we're placing you correctly. Um, so, for example, you might have applied for um, an agriculture course, but actually your real passion is conservation. Whereas, so therefore, it may be that we say, well, actually, the, the land and wildlife might be a better route for you. So they will be talking to you about those sorts of things just to make sure that we're absolutely putting you as much as we possibly can on that right course at the right level. So it will be, you know, talking about your predicted grades and it's about being really honest about those, you know. So if you're if you're looking to, to you know, you might be getting a grade two in your maths and, and that's fine. It's absolutely, you know, we will work and support you to, to get as high as you possibly can. But don't come in and say, well, I think I'm going to get a grade nine because then we're, we're in a bit of a pickle. So I think it's just really about those open and honest discussions so that we can get you in the right place. And also, if you need support, um, we've got a number of reasons why you might need support. So if you're a little bit anxious about coming into college or, you know, it, it's just a little bit overwhelming. If you let people know, we can ensure we've got the right support in place for you, because with the right support, you will thrive and you will make progress. And I think that's the thing is we can get then everything in place to ensure that you have the best possible start on your courses. Because it does go back to the um, mission statement that Paula said at the beginning about challenging minds, inspiring success and the securing futures. We need to make sure you're on the right course so that we can secure that future that you want. And thinking about the future, I've got a question here, Paula, about if I want to go to university, am I better to do the level three courses on offer here or to um, stay on at sixth form and do A levels? Oh, I think it. Every course is it's it's about what's right for you and both will get you to university. If you are looking at getting to university, especially in the land based areas, um, they're going to be looking for what vocational experience, what knowledge you have about that area. I'm not saying that A-levels aren't the right place because they are absolutely right for the students wanting to go on to certain areas. I think certainly within the land based, um, all the institutions at that level are going to look at your background knowledge because you will be continuing in in the same vein you know the the universities the agricultural universities are practical you know they've got practical they've got the farms they've got they just take it to that next level so i would absolutely say that anybody that tells you that a vocational level three won't get you to university just point them in our direction and we'll put them straight because they do and we send people to university every year every single year and we've got he programs that we accept um, students onto so it does work but it's about the course that you want to do it's about the area that you want to go into and that's the sort of conversation talk to your you know at the interview this is where I want to go is this the right course for me and those are the questions you can ask Thank you, Paula. Just a reminder to um, attendees, we've got the question and answer function open. Um, so if you've got any queries, do pop them in Q&A and we'll pick them up. Um, my next one I'll, I'll pick up, Paula, which is around when are you going to do T-levels? So somebody has been listening in at the oh, yeah. careers guidance. Um, the T-levels in the land based industries won't come in until September 2023. Yeah. So that's the watch this space. So if you if you do start on a level two in 2022 with us, there will be the option to move on to a T-level in 2023, um, but they're not available anywhere in the country um, no. until that point. We're still working through. In fact, I was at a meeting yesterday uh, for the new T-levels and we're still um, um, they're at the they're developing the the content um, and and actually coming into colleges and employers to ensure that that content is absolutely right for the T level so that when it hits in 2023 it's it's exactly what the industry needs. And what's really good is they've got a lovely focus on sustainability. Mm, There's lots of things yeah. you've touched on. Um, a question here, Paula, about the land-based technology. If I got good GCSE grades and so I could from what you've said um, by having my English and maths at level four and above start at level three but I've not done technology before should I start at level two anyway or can I really go straight on to the level three? You can yeah absolutely we've got students who are doing that um, this year who have started on the level three with those grades um, we have some students who've worked through from level two to level three and again I think that will base we, we absolutely place individually 
And I think that's key. Um, we, we, you know, the lecturers there, they're very, very experienced, the, the course team within that area, and they will talk to you. They will take you through what the content is, and they will really sort of make sure that they're placing you appropriately. But yes, you can start, even if you haven't had that background, you can start a, on the level three program. Um, but they will, as I say, they will work on an individual basis. And if they feel that the level two is the best starting point, then that's where they will they will say, yeah, that's where you need to be. Um, but as I say, it, it's on an individual basis. Um, okay. And I, that's right. And, and it's important that it is that way. Yeah. And you mentioned work placement. Does that mean that I have to find my own work placement? Um, if you can. A lot of our students do. They will go out. Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of students will know um, and, and have that opportunities. But we also have a team that will help you, your lecturers, your course team, everybody. So I think it's not something to be worried about. And quite often what happens is students will come to us and say, found this this placement is this okay obviously we make sure that it's health and safety all the checks are done to make sure it's it's appropriate for you to go to what we don't ever want to do is to send you somewhere that's unsafe or you know so we we will support in that um, but quite often students come with to us with ideas we then go through the processes but we also have the situation where we have students who say i've tried and haven't got a positive response can you help and we will always help as well Thank you. Um, we've got a question about accommodation, which I'll pick up. Um, can I stay in the accommodation all of the time? Um, no, the accommodation um, is five day week. So you would arrive um, on the Sunday afternoon at some point and you would be staying here from the Sunday night through to the Thursday night and then going home um, later on Friday. So you spend the weekend um, back at home with parents or carers or or in your own place. Um, so we don't actually offer the seven day week accommodation, but we do prioritise the accommodation for those of you that want to study our specialist provision and live furthest away because we do recognize transport is not always easy um, these sorts of specialist courses that Paul has been talking about you can't do very many places in the eastern region at all and so you might be coming not from Norfolk you might be coming much further away um, and you would then have to make sure you could get here so Sunday afternoon Sunday evening arrival Friday afternoon Friday evening leaving um, during term time only um, and then we talk about full time courses, Paula, but actually how many days a week would I need to be in college for, say, a level three programme? Usually it's three days in college. So three days doing a variety of um, theory and practical sessions. Um, and then so that's on a level three. And then obviously you would have your industry day as well. So I would say normally it's about a four day provision. Um, it, level ones and level two similar. Um, but obviously we make sure that the maths and English are in the timetable. Um, and that's essential. As I say, those skills are so essential in this industry. We just, you, you know, it, there's, you know, one of the things that when we're talking to employers, um, they will say, especially I, I would say on the math side, it, it, just so much maths within the area. Um, but as I say, English, very, very important as well. So, we, it, you know, we, we make sure that we're developing those skills. Um, and one of the things that I work with with the vocational staff is that they can build in that within the the, the the sessions that they're running their vocational sessions so people can see why it's so important um so that you know they will do when you're calculating feeds for the animals as i say when you're writing risk assessments your english skills um when you're looking at drilling and um the spreaders and sprayers you, you know it, it's it, it's just constantly you know calculations and figuring things out but something that people say, oh, I didn't really, you know, didn't really connect that that's maths and that's English. And you think, absolutely, that's that's what it's about. But the more that you can see how it fits in, I think the more it makes you go, yeah, I, I get it and I understand it. And in terms of that three, four days a week, what what would the balance be? Because you mentioned theory and practical. Yeah. Um, what, what sort of might the balance be? Um, I think. You tend to do a little bit more practical um, at level one and level two as you're going up. The theory builds up, obviously, and, and that makes absolute sense. Um, so as you're going from level one to level two, the theory will increase. So you'll do slightly less on the practical. And again, from level two to level three, the theory then brings in. So I would say at level three, by the time you're getting there, it's 50 50, um, but slightly a little bit more on the level ones and the level twos. Um, 
I know people really love the practical element of it. Um, and sometimes the theory is like, oh, do I have to sit in a classroom? Um, and we do make it enjoyable and we do do student activities, but it is, it's so important because it is that higher level thinking that we're developing. It's those skills and abilities to be able to then go into those higher paid jobs that you would, you know, that everybody wants to to try and uh, and get as far as they possibly can once they're going out into employment and industry. And I've only got a couple more questions. So if anybody has got anything else that they want to answer, do pop it in the chat and I'll make sure we, we pick it up. Um, you did mention group sizes earlier, Paula, where you said we obviously can't have 30 um, going into it, working yeah. with the <laughs> livestock, but, but how many people might I be in a class with? So in the theory side, I think the largest group that we have at the moment is about 22, um, but that splits down into two groups once we go into the practical areas. Um, so it tends to be round about 18 to 22, 23 students within a class, but smaller once we're doing the practical elements. And just to clarify, on the agriculture at level three, I don't have to choose my specialism until my second year. That's right. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, I think we're just about there then. Is there anything, Paula, that you get regularly asked by students that you think we've not been asked by the group that are watching us today? I think so. I was going questions. to say, yes. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the sort of the split between the, the the practical and the, and the theory is, is definitely one, because as I say, um, the practical is the, is the bit because it's it's getting out and doing and it's you know you because it is in any industry um standard areas that's when you feel like you're really doing the job that you want to go into but i think i just can't emphasize enough how much the theory is as important um and again the sort of the relevance of the maths and english i think that it it, it it's just that package um and i think really um just to start thinking about those work placement opportunities if if you're aware of any employers who who may be looking for that but also thinking ahead and looking at your progression routes um i think it's really important to you know it's all right to think of of I'm going to go and do one year here, but start thinking, well, what's my second year and, and, and what does that look like? And so I think, but no, I think some good questions um, and hopefully we've covered most things. And even with level one or two, the practicals wouldn't be any more than sort of 50-50. Yeah. So that, that would be, yeah, and then reducing yeah. as you get yeah. that up to level yeah. three, second yeah. year. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, I think we've picked everything everything up then. What I just would say to, to all of you is really spend the next um, little while until you, till you've left school, really asking questions, really testing out what is the thing that I really want to do. But don't just have a plan A. Do think about what, what will I do if I open my GCSE envelope and I've done a lot better than I expected because I've worked really hard. Um, have a plan B thinking in that way. And what will I do if I open it? I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed. What might, what might I be able to do? But if you get what you expect, it's better than you expect or not as good as you expect do still come along to us because I hope that what we've demonstrated is that we've got enough courses at the different levels that we can put you on a program yeah. that absolutely will suit you and will get you to where you need to to go to so work really hard um, get ready for those exams in the summer term do come and see us keep your eye on the website so that you can see um, when we've got those open days follow us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook um, and keep up to date with all of the activities that the students are doing. Work really hard and we look forward to seeing you here enrolling with us in September 2022. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you.